Hello, welcome back to Naptime Stories. Today I want to talk about something that is difficult for me to deal with. Um, but I want to talk about it and what I'm going through and I'm hoping that if you are going through anything like this that you too will reach out and we could be of support. So about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Ooh, I didn't realize I was going to be emotional. Horrible time in our lives. Horrible. We never, I mean, my mom's a very strong, healthy woman. Um, I don't think I've ever really seen my mom sick in my life. Like, literally, I don't ever think I've seen my mom sick. Um, maybe a little cold here or there, but never have I seen her sick. Um, my mom had ovarian cancer. She had a surgery that was supposed to be a six hour surgery turned into an eight hour surgery. We were literally in the waiting room all day long and when six hours hit and her number was still on the board, there's a board that you could watch and you can see their transition periods as to when they go into recovery, what's going on, um, that kind of thing. My dad was getting phone calls throughout it telling us, you know, they first went in for exploratory to make sure that it wasn't all over her and sprinkled all over her intestines as well and that they were good to move forward with the surgery. So they called my dad uh, first and said, yes, we are moving on to the surgery. So we were all, thank God, this is amazing. We're moving on to the surgery. So eight hours later, um, the doctor came and talked to us and this doctor had been amazing, amazing. Like she, you could tell she gave her all in that OR. She had my mom's blood on her scrubs. Um, she literally walked right from the OR and came to talk to us. And what we discovered was that, one, the surgery went well and she was able to get most of the cancer. So my mom had a full hysterectomy, including her omentum, which is like a, uh, a cover, like a fatty kind of cover um, in her stomach. So plus the omentum. There was a little bit on her diaphragm. But then the doctor said everything she was able to get except they found a piece of cancer on her stomach and there's nothing they could do for that they had to leave that um, the reason why they had to leave it which in in the moment I couldn't wrap my head around it because I was way in my feelings and my doctor brain was turned off I was a daughter and a scared daughter at uh, that um, and I was in my feelings and she said that the reason why they had to leave it is they would have had to do what's called a Y surgery, which means they would have had to remove her stomach and attach her esophagus straight to her intestines. They said one, that would have been another six hours of surgery. My mom had already lost way too much blood in the eight hours that she was in. They couldn't do, my mom couldn't handle another six hours of surgery. Mind you, my mom is a very strong, strong woman. She was not sick. She didn't look sick. We prepped for the surgery so that she was strong with foods and all that. And so they said she, she could not have handled another six hour surgery and her quality of life would have been not good. So she decided that what the plan was is to leave that and to attack it with chemo. So that was a, a plan moving forward. So we decided, okay, let's Let's do that. Like we were not happy with it, but we had thought that we were going to have surgery. My mom was going to be amazing and good to go. Yeah, but like we're talking about cancer, which is unpredictable. And so now, almost a year and a half, two years later, my mom is cancer free. Thank God. Um, she's cancer free. She's doing well. Her hair came back. It used to be bone straight. Now it's curly and it's weird because my mom's never had... Uh, curly hair. She's doing fantastic now uh, and everything has has gone good. She's on um, a chemo pill that she takes daily and again 
she's been a year cancer free and she's doing amazing. So why do I tell you that story? Well, as my mom was going through all of this, she had a bunch of blood work and it came out that she is BRCA positive. So this is a gene mutation and we've never had anything in our family where we've had any kind of cancer. Um, my grandfather passed away, her father passed away of a massive heart attack. Um, and my grandmother passed away of gallbladder cancer, but we never had anything more. My mom has 10 brothers and a sister. So there's 12 children in that family. And again, there's never been any kind of health issues when it came to cancer. So my mom found out she was BRCA positive. So that meant every one of her brothers and her sister had to be tested. And if anyone tested positive, then the children had to be tested. So that means my mom tested positive. So me, my brother, and my sister all need to be tested. My sister was tested and she is negative, thank God. My brother was still waiting on his testing and I was also tested. I was tested and I am positive. So what does that mean? So this will kind of give you a background as to my rush into getting pregnant. I know there had been a comment about my rush um, and this will explain it. Um, so I am BRCA1 positive, so I have a gene mutation, which means I have a high risk of cancer, a, a pretty high risk of cancer. So let's break this down a little bit of my risk versus a normal person's risk. So the two risks that I have are ovarian and breast cancer. So in a female breast cancer, uh, my risk is between 51 to 87 as I age. Uh, for a gen general population, their risk is a 1.9% to a 7.1%. So again, mine is a 51 to an 87% risk. So exponentially higher than the normal population without this BRCA1 gene. Ovarian cancer is a 23% risk to a 63% risk. And in the general population, it is a 0.2 to 0.7% risk. So again, I have an increased risk of ovarian and breast cancer. And then there's also a pancreatic risk. It doesn't say a percentage, but it says elevated. Not sure what elevated means, and I'm not sure that the jury is out on that yet either. So I think this is a lot of, they're still trying to figure it out kind of thing. So let me read a little bit about like what this mutation means. And a BRCA1 gene is usually a protein that does not function properly. So the defective BRCA1 protein is unable to fix DNA damage, leading to mutations in other genes. These mutations can accumulate and may allow cells to grow and divide uncontrollably to form a tumor. The BRCA1 inactivating mutations lead to a predisposition of cancer. So. Basically, BRCA1 is supposed to go and fix damaged DNA, and that is defective in me. So if I have any kind of damaged DNA, and it's a tumor, it'll just continually, continuously grow because I don't have the BRCA1 to go and fix that in my body. So, I went to a, um, breast doctor as well to have an exam. Um, my OB knows all about this. I have what's called Myrid My Risk. Myrid My Risk, that's what it's called, something like that. So I had that, uh, that's the genetic screening I had done for this. And I also went to go see a breast doctor. And I'm looking for a new breast doctor because as I talked to her, she was pretty rude to me as into what is taking you so long to get pregnant? Like why, why are you waiting so long? And the thing is, is I just met the man of my dreams and we've just been married. Like we're, we haven't been married that long. 
And we have some other things that we're dealing with as well, like his age and vasectomy and that kind of stuff as well. So wasn't a big fan of hers. Anyways, the what I need to do in order to make sure that everything is okay, that I'm tracking, is I get what's called a CA-125 blood test every six months. So that detects any kind of ovarian inflammation. Anything that might be going on in my ovaries, I get a CA-125. Mine is usually about a seven to nine, which is good. Over 30, oh my gosh, it, your MS. So we wanna be about, um, I think less than 10 is where they really want us. So that's where I usually hang out is a seven to nine. So we get that done. I also have a breast MRI. I had one of those done. Everything was good on that. I also had thermography, which is heat related and heat sensitive. So I have that performed as well. I do not have a mammogram done. They really, really want a mammogram. But if I have a tumor in my breast and the breast is squished, and there is damage done to that tumor, and I have a BRCA1 gene that cannot repair that tumor, why would I have a mammogram done? That is just my logic. I do not want anything squished with possible damage. So I will do MRI and I will do thermography and self-exam, so I do monthly self-exams as well. So I'm doing what I need to, eating healthy, all that, making sure that everything is good and that I'm moving forward. So I had mentioned before that I have three rounds of IUI to try and then that's it. There's no IVF. That's not an option. The reason is is because my risk for cancer is already high and I'm already past the age where they want to do a full hysterectomy and a double mastectomy. Like that was the other, that's the other conclusion. That's the other help that I can get is just a full hysterectomy and a double mastectomy and then hopefully my pancreas is okay like that's you know all I could do is live a healthy life and pray that God has a plan that I am not gonna have to go through that um, so as I am getting ready to do IUI I know that the hormones increase my risk of cancer and I've known this in my head from my research from my background from my knowledge I've known this to be the thing but it's kind of hard when it's confirmed like you I, I know it I've done the research like yeah I'm good but then once it's confirmed like I literally cried about it um, so we had another consult with our doctor where we had a consult with our doctor and she said she wanted a letter from my OB stating that I know the risk of even IUI. So IUI, you don't do as many drugs and medications and hormones and stuff, but IVF, you do. You do a lot more. So I'm trying to do as minimal as I can, and I don't know that I really want to go into IVF and, and risk even more of my health. Um, yeah, I could take my, my breast off. Yeah, I could take my uterus and my ovaries out, but I still have a pancreas. So it, it's a tough decision. Let me tell you, it's a very tough decision. Um, once I get through IUI and if we're on the other end and faced with IVF, maybe I'll say something else at that time, but I don't know. Right now I want to say no, but I don't know. So I received this letter from my OB to go to my fertility doctor that lets her know that you know it's we're good um, and it just says that Nicole is a patient under her care and I am aware that I am BRCA1 positive and that we have had a review of the breast MRI I am aware of possible risk elevate sorry possible risk related to any hormones that may be given to me during fertility treatments I am cleared for fertility treatments from the gynecological perspective. So there's increased risk. I know the risk. My doctor knows the risk. My doctor told them the risk. And that's where I am. It is not a fun place to be. 
so everyone wonders why I'm in a rush. One, I'm going to be 40. Like, I'm not, I'm not young, <laughs> according to, you know, pregnancy. Um, and then I have this hanging over my head. It, it is tough every six months when I go to the doctor. Like, it's the anxiety of going and then the anxiety of waiting for the results. Uh, it's not easy. And I just pray that I am as healthy as I can be. And that, you know, God has a plan for me and it's all going to be okay. So, in case anybody was wondering, that is me. This is my life. This is my story. And that is it for nap time stories. Keep on dreaming.